Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is shortest path from 1 to n and it is going to be an easy level problem. So I was not able to make the video yesterday because I was traveling but uh, if it happens any again uh, after it, you what you can do is you in the evening or during the night you can have a look at my github info. Most probably I would have updated the solution by the night. So in case you want to check it out, you can find it on my GitHub repo. So the links to the rep repository are always attached in my description. So at any time you want to look at the code, please refer to it. And uh, let us quickly start with today's problem. So it says that we can consider a directed graph which has vertices from 1 to n. And from each vertex, either we can go to uh, the next vertex, that is just next vertex. If you are currently at i, we can go to i plus 1. Otherwise, if you are at i, we can also go to 3i, right. So basically, we have two types of transitions. From i, I can go to i plus 1 and from i, I can also go to 3i, right. Now, I want to find the minimum number of steps or minimum number of edges in the path from 1 to n. So, for example, I go to some x and go to some y and then go to some n. So, the answer in this case will be 3 because there are 3 edges, 1, 2 and 3. Right. Or you can also say it like you need three number of steps to reach n from 1. So this is what you have to solve in this particular problem. Now always, always the best approach is always to use the multiple value 3 as many times as possible. Right. Because you will see that this is not very optimal to do but this is always a better option because you will be able to jump more number of vertices. So if you always want to make this 3i jump and you know that you have to start from 1 then you have to make the jumps in such a way such that you exactly reach n. So for example if I take the example of 12 now you are at 1 then you multiply it by 3 so you get at 3 then you add 1 to it so you get at 4 now you multiply it by 3 so you get 12 right. So this is multiplying by 3 this is adding by 1 this is multiplying by 3. So you see these operations do not follow any specific order, right? That means it is not like the multiples are together and the additions are together. It will not be a case like this. So sometimes there will be multiplication, sometimes there will be addition and when you use the correct combination of these multiplication and additions, you will be able to reach your n value. Now the problem is how do we identify the correct order? So if you always want these multiples to be there, we would want the number that we currently have to be a multiple of 3, right. So what I am saying is here you see that you are multiplying by 3 but if you go reverse you see that you will be dividing by 3. So in order to divide correctly your number should be a multiple of 3. So this is the whole target of a current problem. Now let us say let us take the example of 12 only. 12 is a uh, what do we say multiple of 3, right because then mod 3 is going to be 0. That means I can divide this number by 3 and I will get 4, right. So that means in one step from 12 I have reached 4. I am just going in reverse order. But is 4 a multiple of 3? Not because 4 mod 3 is 1. So what I will instead do is I will subtract 1 from 4, 3. Now 3 is a multiple of 3 obviously. So I will divide it by 3. So this is divide by 3. This is subtract 1 and this is divided by 3 and hence we reach 1. So you see at each step what you essentially have to do is you have to try to make a number multiple of 3, right. So it will either take you 0 steps, 1 steps or 2 steps because it will either leave remainder 0, 1 or 2. So in either of these steps you will be able to make your current number a multiple of 3 and then you can easily divide it by 3. So this is what you had to do in this particular problem because you want to maximize the number of times you use this multiply operator and since the multiple of any integer is going to be another integer that means you have to make your current number a multiple of 3 first only then you could use this particular order in reverse right. So what I have essentially done here is I have initialized my answer with 0 and why my n is greater than or equal to 3 right because for n is less than 3 or for example for the values 1 and 2 I have to deal the answer separately right. Now what I do is I add n mod 3 plus 1 to my answer. So what is this value? So basically let us say I am currently at 14 right. So 
its nearest multiple of 3 would be 12. So, it would take me 2 steps first of all, it would take me 2 steps to convert it into 12 and then I will have to divide 12 by 3, right. So, divide 12 by 3. So, these will be 2 steps plus this will be 1 step, right. So, that is exactly what I have done here. I have done n mod 3 plus 1. Now, I have divided n by 3. So, if I divide 14 by 3 in C++ or I divide 12 by 3, it does not really matter because it is anyways going to give me the floor value, right. So, uh, you can also do it like this directly divide n by 3. But if you are using a language like Python where it gives you decimal or floating point, you will have to subtract this n mod 3 value from n first and then divide n by 3 or you can try to take the floor value and at the end. I have to return answer plus n minus 1. Why? Because let us say the value of n was 2, the last value of n was 2, I will still have to make one operation to make it into 1. So, that is why n minus 1, right. So, this is how you could solve this problem. Let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works. Right. So, you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. So, the overall idea was to make a number multiple of 3 so that you can apply this particular operation 3i in reverse and you can eventually make your current number equal to 1. Right. So, that was that would be it for this particular video. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. In the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.